So we go down the river the next day, and he, these fish are so bad that the, the Australians call them river rambos. That's the name. <laughs> and I'm going to tell you, it is the perfect name for these fish. I'll tell you. These are the two river rambos. The one on the bottom is called a spot tail bass. The one on the top is called a New Guinea bass. Uh, they, somebody said to us, well, how big did they get? And I said, I don't know. All the big ones have broke the damn line and got away. We ain't never caught them up over 40 pounds, but... But uh, anyway, we go down this river, and the rivers are gorgeous. I mean, uh, these you see scenes like this, and you see you'll be going down the river, and it'll be like three or four hundred parrots fly over at one time, and all kind of exotic birds, butterflies as big as a, a Reader's Digest when you open up, flying around in the air. Anyway, we get down to this first. What these river these bass do? They lay under a bunch of bush uh, trees and stuff and logs along the bank. So we get down here. And I'm looking in the boat, and I see that he ain't got nothing but this 40-pound and this 50-pound test outfit with him, and these great big plugs. And I thought, well, maybe these damn guys were telling the truth. So uh, we get to this tree right here, and uh, the guy, Dean Butler, the fellow that run the boat, pulled up in his 20-foot boat with a 40-horsepower motor and says, this guy here, Rod, says, okay, let me have a go. Well, I thought, you know, maybe these guys aren't telling the truth. I said, I tell you what, Rod, you have a go. He said, no, you have a go. Well, it was back and forth for a while. Finally, he decided to make a cast. So he goes up front, and he takes his pliers out, and they got a star drag thing on them, and he locks the drag down with the pliers. I thought, God damn, you know. So he walks up there, and he throws this great big lure back in there, and he got the motor in neutral, just sitting there, puck, 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 like that, you know. Throw this back, and this big green thing came out and grabbed this lure, and he set the hook, and he had hit it, Dean, and Dean threw the boat in reverse, and they tried to drag this fish out of this tree. Well, I couldn't believe this. About that time, I hear pow, and the damn 40 pound test line done broke in head. Man, I'm getting that 20 pound stuff off my fly line like you wouldn't believe, you know. So I put on some 40 pound and went to the next, and then he made another cast in here, and the next one took him under the tree. Well, the next one was my turn, so they went to another tree, and I got this huge fly rod, and I caught sailfish and all kinds of stuff with. 40-pound test leader, this great big hook. I throw it back in there. Dean's got the boat in neutral, and this great big thing come out and grabbed it, and I set the hook, and I said, hit it, Dean. And when he did, the boat went backwards, the fish went the other way, and the line that I was holding my hand just burned a big white groove right through my hand. I couldn't even hold on to it. The only way I ever caught these fish is as soon as you set the hook, you wrap the line twice around the reel, and then the guy puts the motor in reverse and you drag them out of the tree. I've never seen a fish like that. This was the biggest fish I caught for the movie. I caught one bigger than this later. This weighed 18 pounds, but they are the strongest fish I've ever seen in my life. Mind me to show you John Archer's fly rod before you leave. Okay. This is a spot tail bass, which is the same family, but has a big round spot on it, and they live further up the rivers. The waters in New Guinea are some of the most beautiful waters in the world. In 30 feet of water, you can see everything on the bottom. Uh, this is the atoll. We flew over and fished around hundreds of these. Uh, plenty of, this is queen fish, uh, big barracudas, thread fin salmon. No, these are called finger mark brim. We went from village, I mean from river mouth to river mouth, and one day we run along and we seen this village. Incidentally, there's a uh, live volcano. You can see the smoke yeah. coming out of that volcano back here. Now this village is on an island, had 140 people there, had no idea we were going to be there. And we get on the island, and the first thing I see is a Mickey Mouse town, <laughs> which I thought was really funny. Now this is on a remote island in New Guinea. Uh, Makes you want to invest there were in four tribes on this island, and there's uh, yeah, I see it. Yeah, see that shark eating that tuna? Yeah. Well, what that is is every tribe. There's 140 tribes in New Guinea. Every tribe has its own symbol, and that particular tribe is a shark eating a tuna. And uh, if you're traveling around New Guinea as a native, and you get come somewhere and you see that, then you know that that's your tribal house. Each village has like a council house or a courthouse or something like that that the tribal people from that tribe can go to. And that's what that really meant. Kids were great everywhere. I found that anytime you take m and you can make friends with kids anywhere in the world. <laughs> These were the guys that went on the last trip with me. The guy Bob Marriott's on the left there. He runs a big fly shop in uh, California. 
And the little tiny guy there is Jack, uh, brother, uh, Jack uh, Erskine from, from uh, Australia. He hooked a fit one of them New Guinea bats. It drug him over against the side of the boat, pulled his plug rod out of the water, out of his hand, and went in the water about from here to the screen. The next day, one of the natives dove in the river and found it, and the big two old hooks had been straightened completely out of the thing. Uh, this is that 40-foot war canoe that I went up to. That thing carried 16 people, all our provision for a week, and 20 barrels of gasoline. And not a knot hole in that log, Ted. Yeah. You got a motor on it? Or? Yeah, it had a 40 horsepower motor. We were standing at this place here called Argem Island. Mm -hmm. the, the shoreline is right where we are. And it's about a mile from the island to the shore. And the water, 100 yards off that beach, is at least seven or 800 feet deep. Man. Uh, it, it was a fabulous place. This lodge had been built three weeks before we got there. Very comfortable lodge, screened in. They had flush toilets, the only flush toilet these natives had ever seen all day long in here. Wah, 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 where they go in there and flush that thing just to see how it worked. They've never, they've never seen a flush toilet before. Um, we, in the evening, we all sit around and talk after we got done eating and everything. You I recognize see, you, by the way. Yeah, you can see the blue, how deep the water is yeah, right there. Blue. It's gone from green to blue water in about 50 yards. Yep. And we broke a lot of damn tackle down here. You can see the right behind you where the water blew just 40 yards off yeah. the shore. We stood on the back. Now that, those fish look like they're a long ways off, but that's because of the camera. We were actually casting flies and sting lures. Those were tuna. They were small tuna. We caught tuna and all kind of fish right from the beach. This, this, and the shoreline is just over there on beyond us, and there's eight rivers over there where all these bass are at. Mm -hmm. The natives down there in all these rivers of uh, villages are really friendly and they're wonderful with their kids. They take them out and teach them how to fish and hunt and all these things and they spend a lot of time with their children. Do the children's hair darken up when they get older? Uh, they have, it must be the, the white man's influence, but some of them have almost blonde hair. In fact, that little baby with the lady with the yellow dress, look how light colored his hair. And, that, and the one next to, him. next to him is even lighter, Ted. Yeah. See it? Yeah. And yet, uh, the two men on the right got almost dark brown mahogany hair. The reason I was wondering is it looked like all the kids are like that, but all the adults are. <laughs> no, no, it, that just happened to be those huh. ones. This is a place we were up in one river and we caught some fish and we stopped to give them some fish. And incidentally, that lady's pregnant there. There yeah. was a baby born while we were there, like not here, but another place, and they squat, stand up and squat to give birth. They don't lay down like uh, somebody to do here. <laughs> and you know, the next day that lady was out washing clothes and working in the garden. The ne very next day, I couldn't get over that. Anyway, we went to this place here, stopped here, and gave him some fish, and one of my buddies decided he'd go up and go into the man house. They have a place called a man, man house, and it's just a lodge that women are never allowed in. I don't know why in the hell they ain't, because there ain't nothing in there but a couple logs in a fireplace. But anyway, they went in there, and they and this guy chewed this beetle nut. And Teddy, if you look on here, you'll see that's what it looks like. Look at his eyeballs. We had to help him back to the boat. It gives you a jag like a drunk. It is. It, it really knocked old Dean out. We you had like to make, it? He, he was drunk for, for about half an hour like that. Yeah, what did he say about it? Was it unpleasant? He didn't know, oh, he said, never do it again. Yeah, okay, he said, I'm... it's worse than alcohol. <laughs> then we fished all these rivers. Now, these rivers we're fishing here, nobody had ever fished in before with artificial lures. This was the biggest of those New Guinea bass I caught. This one weighed about 28 pounds, and that's the largest one I ever caught to date. They look mean. Look at the teeth yeah. of that rascal. They chew wooden plugs right to pieces. It's kind of like a carp's man. Uh, we it's use like these kind of great, These flies are great big flies. They'd be five, six inches long. And then right out between the, right out by the island, there were that, all those splashes there are tuna and sailfish working on bait, and the birds are up there catching what the tuna and the sailfish run up on the top. Here you can see actually sea guys casting. Underneath that fly reel, you can see fish breaking out there, and a guy making a cast to those fish. This thing called a coral trout, this is absolutely 
the best fish I ever ate in my life. It's uh, when you clean it, it's got snow white meat. There's no blood lines or anything in it. And everybody down there says it's the best fish they've ever eaten. We caught marlin. Well, this is a black marlin, weighed 200 pounds. And we caught it within a quarter mile of shore. Hmm. Then we went to another place called the Ben's Back River, which is where I was about five weeks ago. There's two bucks fighting right there in the front yard, see them? <laughs> and they're wild deer. And we lived in that lodge right there on the Ben's Back River. And the, it had a drought there. And uh, the, the jungles were catching on fire all over the place. And we had just come through that. You couldn't hardly see in the middle of that. There were flames leaping 70 feet in the air. And they had a lot of fires. The jungle comes back pretty quickly, though. This is typical of the villages there. Uh, this was a large village, maybe 10, 12 buildings. This is where we got them watermelons. Why did they have them up on stilts so far? Because floods? the whole area floods in the, in the rainy season. Those rivers run, rise 20, 30 feet. All the houses are on stilts. They had a sing sing. Um, She'd been eating some of that bean or nothing. They all, yeah, look at that, that, that tongue and all that woman on the I'm telling these women so ugly, I mean, it's unbelievable. <laughs> um, but there's a guy underneath all that grass, all that palm fronds. And Here's what the they do, they have uh, a sing sing is a big, it's a big contest they have in New Guinea. And the way you get into the national contest is you're in, in each of your villages, the people compete to see who's going to be the best decoration and uh, the, the most unusual singing and all this kind of stuff. And this guy won in his village. We were just at this village. And of course they went from here, this guy, and then later would go to a regional, and then from regional you finally go to the national. But it took him five minutes to get all that shit, all out from underneath all that shit. You know, that thing must have weighed 100 pounds. Also, they do a lot of hunting. You know, I said is they they uh, they live off the land. Uh, these two guys have got bows and arrows. They're going up the river to hunt deer, uh, wallaby, which they call kangaroos, and wild pigs. And they usually they got a dog or two. I don't. See. Oh yeah, one right in the middle. There's two of one right yeah. behind. Yeah, that's there. right. Yeah. And uh, notice they got uh, conch shells laying there, conch yeah. laying there yeah. on the boat. You can see the bows and arrows. And uh, we were on the bank, uh, the bank of this river one day, and we saw the native, uh, three natives, trying to lure some kangaroos about the cold wallabies. They're about about as big, about as tall as little teddy. And what this, what they, did, how they got these kangaroos? They took the forearm and they slam it down on the ground, make a thump sound, and then they poof, poof. And they lured these damn kangaroos over, and they kept hopping over to see what was going on. And eventually one of them shot low in the air, and he hopped away over a hill, and the native went off after him. About a half an hour later, here come the kangaroo back again, hopping. <laughs> and the native right behind him, and finally the right, native got up close enough to spear him. And they put the thing in, they field dressed it, and put it in a canoe, and took it up to the village. And we stopped at the village on the way up. And they have no refrigeration. So what they do is when they catch something, uh, they just cut it up, and everybody in the village shares in it because they can't keep it anyway. But they still hunt there like they did a thousand years ago. These are those wallabies. In fact, there's deer in the background. Yeah. The wildlife uh, around here is all uh, over the place. Emu, isn't it? Emu? Or Thank you. Yeah, an bird. emu? Yeah. Emu? A bird. bird there. Where do you see that? Right in the center, right. dead center. No, those are... Uh, Reels? They're they're the, they're like a sandhill crane, but they ain't a sandhill crane. They're it's a big, big birds, big as they are. They, oh, they stand six feet, Teddy. <laughs> Very tall birds. This is the biggest uh, one of these New Guinea bass we caught. This weighed about thirty-five pounds. Mm -hmm. This is the biggest jack or trevally we caught. This weighed sixty pounds. This was the mm -hmm. biggest. Of spot tail bass. You can see a big Man. spot back there yeah. with the tail. We figured this fish weighed about 45 or 50 pounds. So that navy on the right looks real friendly, don't it, Ted? <laughs> <laughs> this was the biggest one we caught on fly. Uh, this was a barramundi. We, this weighed 30 some pounds. We also got several others that were larger on plug tackle. 
They got crazy trees down there, and it's called a boab tree. It looks like it's been stuck in the ground upside down. <laughs> That's really the way it grows. Uh, this is a cassowara, yeah, cassowara. which is um, this is the male. The female has a brown head. Uh, they got they're about four and a half feet high. They weigh a hundred pounds. They're considered delicious eating. The natives hunt them quite often. We saw quite a few. We saw 30 of these. Looks about like a turkey. Yeah, they got a they got a leg that's as big around as a I'd say a woman's arm, forearm, that big around, and they got feet on the head. They got three toes up front, one in the back, spread that wide, Man. and the the toes are that big around. And uh, there was uh, they sent some dogs after one, three dogs after this, and they kicked all three dogs to death. Hmm. Uh, they really, I wouldn't want to tackle one of them. Yeah. And they drink different from anything I ever saw. They take, when they come down to the banks and drink, they take their their uh, long neck and they go down in the water like that and up, and they must let the water run down the tube. Yeah. Then they go back down again and do this. And they, they're very shy. It's hard to get close to Did you do this with a zoom lens? Well, I crawled up. Uh, we saw this one a long ways off. <laughs> And uh, I crawled, the, the, the boat let me out, and I walked up along a mud bank, which made no noise, and then I just eased up enough to get a shot. I got about uh, from here out to your mailbox from it. That's a big bird. That thing is taller than Teddy. Yeah. They got volcanoes that float and it sees smoke all the time. And they got fishing you can do all day long. And it's some of the prettiest country you'll ever see in the world. It is really fabulous country. That's it. How did you get that like that? I do what? Bravo. How did you get that like that? The lettering. The lettering. <laughs> like you have a keyboard? You say, here's $25, Teddy, and he'll make this. Oh. <laughs>